Okay, everybody. Uh, my name is Joseph Ridgeway. I'm with USGS uh, Columbia Environmental Research Center. And I, I put this PowerPoint together uh, last night. I wasn't really prepared to do this. Initially, I thought I was just going to uh, present uh, the, the gear at the pavilion. Um, so during this talk, if there's any questions you guys have, just go ahead and ask them. And I'll, I'll try to answer them as best I can. So from what you all saw yesterday, this is, this is the gear on the water um, with everything out of the water. So you can kind of see it. We have two speakers and uh, two anodes. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, so a lot of people were asking some questions about the gear and what they might cost. And so I, I kind of help I try to incorporate that into this talk as well so that I can answer some of those questions. Uh, one of the big questions was, how much does this cost? And um, we're using a, a, two Bell speakers. Uh, you could probably get away with one speaker because they, they do get pretty loud. Um, we're also using this, uh, this amplifier. So the, the, in, the output of the amplifier powers the speakers. You have the input of your MP3 player and then a 12 volt battery to power them. For our configuration, we're using 200 water speakers, uh, not to the bow, to the bow. And the speakers are omnidirectional, so sounds emitted in um, all directions at uh, pretty much equally. And we're using a loud percussion uh, metal sound. And so what this is, is a, somebody pounding on a metal locker with a hammer. And I sped that up in quick succession in uneven intervals to try to uh, keep the fish from acclimating to the sound. Basically what we're doing is throwing everything we can at this to find something that works to, to dry fish. So right there in front of the speakers, right off the speaker we're getting 160 decibels. And that's just cheap. That's, that's as loud as the speakers can get. And there are some other uh, herding techniques that people are using on the water. So Last year, we, we did a study design to try to figure out uh, which is most effective. And I don't have any data on some of those results, but I do have this heat map to show you how sound is traveling through the water and how efficient it is. So with our underwater speakers, you can see with this heat map, red being 160 decibels, uh, purple being the ambient sound of the, the river, there, there's just naturally sound in the water. And with the acoustic um, speakers, we're getting sound all the way out to uh, a kilometer away on this river. And right up next to the speakers, we're getting 160 de decibels, is what we kind of expected. With the commercial fishing technique, it involves people, uh, commercial fishers, that what they're doing is they're, they're tilting up their motor, pounding on the hull with a, a, either a metal object or a wooden club. And they're trying to emit sound into the water and, and scare the fish. Okay. So we're getting, we, we did this method with our 115 uh, horsepower outboard motor, and but some of those are for fishermen they're using 300 horsepower uh, motors, so it's not quite comparable to what they're doing, but it's, it kind of gets to the point. Of it. And uh, using that method with our boat and, and vigorously kind of on the whole boat is. Uh, loud enough to kind of hurt your ears when you're sitting in the boat. And we're, uh, we're getting a beat of about 140 decibels, but with the speakers, we're producing that out to 240 meters away. So it's quite a bit more efficient. And then the electricity is just the uh, electric fishing boat. Uh, and then the boat alone, so that's just with the boat in here, traveling about three miles an hour. And so we, we're not getting much sound at, um, with, with that thing. It's, uh, we incorporate just the boat because we want it's, uh, kind of a studio control to kind of see is it the boat or is it um, the, the speaker, the electricity that, that are motivating these fish to down the So with our electrofishing uh, configuration that we're using, uh, we're using two stainless steel uh, spheres. And so the idea of using spheres is that we're not getting that super high intensity field right next to the anode. We're trying to spread it out as far as we can so that we're um, 
touching as many fish as possible at, at greater distances. And then we have a, an insulated cable that reaches down at eight feet, and so we're trying to get even depths and more even distance in some deeper water. And we have done some voltage gradient mapping on this and compared to uh, spider arrays, and we're able to um, get more volts out of further distances than with this configuration. And we're using 80 hertz and 40 UV cycle, and it, just from being out of the water and seeing fish behavior, uh, what fish are being mobilized to, and what they're they're responding to, and like a, a, the basic behavior, jumping away from the boat, uh, 40 UV and 80 hertz seem to do a pretty good job of that. And from those observations, they able to come up with this uh, avoidance threshold goal table. Um, so previously working with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, I've, I've learned a great deal about how um, electrofishing can be, um, how you come up with standard, standardization, standardizing a lot of uh, your configurations for different connectivities. And so yesterday what we were doing, uh, we were getting a connectivity of 700, and so we were able to uh, adjust for our, our current goals for that. Uh, so, for the study we did um, last year, still kind of analyzing some of that data, but I have some things to show you guys, some quality of stuff. We're using um, Dixon or Aries to kind of see fish behavior, counting the number of fish that are pushed downstream, and we're also using um, side scan hummingbird unit to kind of quantify the, the amount of fish that are in that reach, and we're, we're uh, getting proportions of fish that are pushed down. So here's the sampling design. We're doing this on Perchy Creek in Columbia, Missouri. We're blocking off a pretty sizable uh, section of the river. Perchy Creek is a tributary of the Missouri River, and it's got about 130 uh, foot, 130 feet uh, wide width, so pretty sizable. Um, so the first step is setting our block as we quickly quickly get those out to the water, and then we have a side scan boat that traverses through the transect and collects site scan data. And we have an Aries boat that's recording Aries. And right after the site scan, um, we quickly deployed one of our, our herding techniques. We had the commercial technique, the electrofishing alone, sound, sound and electrofishing, and then just the boat alone. That's, that's uh, zigzagging through this transect. And we're traveling at a really slow, uh, Velocity. We don't want to pass up fish. We want to give fish a chance to, to feel the stimuli or hear the stimuli and then start moving downstream. So I have a video to show you guys. It's not going to play with PowerPoint. So I'll have to exit out of here. So here's a quick clip, uh, real time. I think we were doing sound and electricity on, on this, uh, this example. And right here's the block head. We're looking at a top-down view. And the block head's coming out this way. And uh, the shore line is right here. Right at about 11 uh, meters away from the boat. And you can see uh, large numbers of fish being pushed down the stream. And we're able to, uh, we're able to we know that these are uh, sober carp because we we got some uh, community data where we know the proportion of the fish. And within the, uh, the silver carp size range, 95% um, are silver carp. So this is a, a really um, high density area. And this is what it looks like on the river where we have the block that stretched out and uh, we're sitting on an area's boat. Just to give you guys an idea. And uh, that's, that's all I have to show today. I can answer any questions. Electric Fisher and Sound. Yeah. So aside from training the carp and stay away from the sound, are you using Electric Fisher anymore? It seems like it's a very simple response. So what that heat map you saw is just, I don't know if I explained it very well, it's uh, just sound. How long was the sound of that? Say it again. It wasn't that much. So this slide right here, it's is 
this what you're referring to? Yeah, the electricity is not in the water. So this is just the uh, sound gradients. And as, as you get, so the, the, the uh, sound traps are at zero on the y-axis, that's uh, zero meters. And we're, we're measuring sound out to a thousand meters away, so a kilometer. And okay, so we're just measuring decibels. Mass. Yeah, so there's, there's no fish data in this. Okay. It's just, I want to give you guys an idea of how sound is being traveled through right. the water and where fish might be picking it up. And then the, the video you showed us was hurting yep. with acoustic and electricity? Yeah, yes. we're, we're hurting fish uh, through a, a block net opening. So this is kind of our first step. We're just trying to concentrate and, and disperse fish to get an idea of what stimuli we need to be putting into the water. Uh, this year we have plans to try to drive fish into, into trap gears or concentrate them in areas and, and sweep them out with a beach sand. So this is, this is the first step in, in getting, getting to the point where we're pulling fish out of the water. And we have used this in the creep core unified method where we're pushing fish into cells and concentrating them for a beach sand or Google. Yeah. So tell me again, you, you set the block net in the river and then what steps did you do from there? So after we set the block net in the river, it's uh, it's not one together, we go. Uh, we have a side scan boat that goes through and enumerates the fish in the reach to get an idea because it it could depend on uh, fish densities. It could be density uh, dependent. And then uh, that side scan boat is the herding boat. It turns around and, and does the herding method. And then we have our areas boat that enumerates the fish that are being pushed out. Yeah. So the dive block and close. Go in uh, we never closed it. We left it open, and we actually did three passes, like a three-pass completion. And um, so they didn't run out naturally, just with the side scan boat. There is movement. Until you turned on. There is natural. There is natural movement, but the movement rates go up after we start, right? Because there's a there's a there is a net effect where fish start encountering that net, and they want to get out of there. And we try to avoid that by uh, enclosing a very big reach, so we're doing half a kilometer, and we're, we're trying to go as quickly as we can so that we're <clears throat> kind of showing what what is the stimuli doing. And um, yeah, this I don't know if I answered your question. You did. I did you know analysis. How many fish were leaving when the sound boat through enumerate and then the number of fish that exit once yeah. you started sweeping that down with the sound of the people. So you've got an estimate of the fish that are there, and then you've got an estimate of the fish that move past the cameras. And that's your Yes, point. we're getting our proportion of fish move. That's we're, that's our hurting effectiveness is proportion of fish move. That's why I didn't want to show a whole lot of this because I didn't want to get into the weeds of it all. I just wanted to show the gear yeah. itself. So mm -hmm. um, anything else? All right, thank you.